Okay, full spoilers for Multiverse of Madness. So, at this point, I think it's clear that Doctor Strange 2 is kind of a divisive film. Personally, I thought it was great. I have to admit I'm a bit biased since Doctor Strange is my favorite MCU hero. His movie was actually what got me into the MCU in the first place, so it always holds a special place in my heart. And I just had a great time watching this movie. The visuals were amazing, especially the sequence of them falling through the multiverse. It managed to surprise me with the twist of Wanda being a villain, and all of the performances were great. Were some of the Sam Raimi touches kind of cheesy? Yes, but in the best way possible. Doctor Strange is exactly the kind of film to put it into. It's magic and multiverses, of course things are going to get trippy. It wouldn't work in something like Black Widow, but Doctor Strange is already a weird character. I thought all the Raimiisms were great. However, the film suffers from a few flaws. First of all, America Chavez didn't have enough to do. The movie treats her like a MacGuffin for a good chunk of the runtime, and while she's vital to the ending, it doesn't make up for the rest of the movie. She seemed interesting, but they didn't have much for her to do in the script. Second, I think they could have gone a lot further with the idea of the multiverse. I understand why they introduced the Illuminati, but I think that time would have been better served hopping to different universes. I don't mean they should have put in more cameos, just that they should have explored the scope of the multiverse more. By only visiting a couple of universes, it doesn't feel as grand as it should have. Third, I thought the finale fight wasn't as interesting as it could have been. The location was kind of dull, and there wasn't much interesting magic used. Even with Zombie Strange there, it wasn't cool as the music fight that had happened minutes before. I was waiting for an Infinity War style solo fight between Wanda and Strange, and they never gave us that. It would have been so cool to see a scene of Wanda coming towards Strange, and he's trying everything he can to slow her down. He's using every spell we've seen him cast before, and a lot of creative new ones. And she's just brushing it aside like dust, blocking and deflecting all of his attacks without even slowing her pace. Obviously, Strange knows he can't win, but it would have been a great sequence to once again demonstrate her power and display more of the creative magic this film introduced us to. Fourth, I think one of the biggest missed opportunities with the movie were the alternate versions of Doctor Strange. I could kind of see what they were trying to say about all of them having similar issues, but in my opinion, that's not the most interesting thing to do with alternate Stranges. Variants of a character provide a great opportunity to gain new insights into who they are, and as a way to help develop the main version of the character. Defender Strange gives us a bit of insight into how Steven thinks, but there wasn't enough of a connection to the main Strange. And I found it odd that there was such a harsh criticism of Illuminati Strange for using the Darkhold, only to have main Strange use it like 20 minutes later. I get the whole desperate times, desperate measures thing, but I think it really undercut any kind of growth Strange was supposed to go through, especially with how little he struggled with it. Ideally, they should have presented Defender Strange as the ideal hero, a Captain America type figure. He could have demonstrated all of Stephen's good qualities, as well as show him just how far he has to grow. Then, they could have given Dark Strange more screen time to further show him as the worst version of Stephen, a vision of what happens when all of his worst flaws and tendencies are left unchecked. Both of these characters could have been used to help the main Stephen understand himself better, and grow. But my greatest issue with the film is tied into both Wanda and Strange, namely the fact that Wanda wasn't the right fit for a Doctor Strange villain. Let me explain. First of all, let me say that Elizabeth Olsen did a fantastic job in the role. Seeing Wanda as an unstoppable force was such a great angle to take. The attack on Kamertage demonstrated how powerful and terrifying she really is. Though I've seen some argue that her arc in this film repeats or erases the growth from WandaVision, I think the movie justified her choices enough that it feels natural, especially considering the Darkhold's corrupting power. I didn't particularly care for her sacrifice at the end, since they're clearly going to bring her back in some capacity. In isolation, though, I didn't have much of an issue with Wanda's story in this film. However, Wanda being the villain was not conducive to furthering Doctor Strange's journey. If she was going to be the main antagonist, her arc and decision should have forced Strange to grow. After all, it is his film. But by focusing on Wanda's arc, they didn't have as much space to work with Strange's arc, especially because those arcs aren't connected in a meaningful way. I know a lot of people might see Strange as a complete character that's already done most of his growing, since he seems to be positioned as a mentor figure in recent films, but he's still a flawed man with a lot to overcome. They had the beginnings of some interesting arcs for Strange, like the speech from Wanda at the farm and the conversation he had with Christine, not to mention the exchange he had with Dr. West, but they didn't follow up on any of those. The fact is, when the antagonist's arc doesn't connect with the heroes, it's difficult to properly develop both, and in this case, Strange ended up getting the short end of the stick in his own movie, which was a shame to see. 
In short, I don't think Wanda was the right villain for this movie. So, who should it have been? Well, they already had a perfect candidate, Baron Mordo. They teased him at the end of Doctor Strange, and I was excited to see them continue that storyline. But the best we get is an alternate universe version of Mordo. That was one of my biggest disappointments with this film, not getting to see 616 Mordo's quest for vengeance. Now, was Mordo the most interesting character from the first Doctor Strange? No, not exactly. But they'd set him up in a way that could have been really engaging. He had a lot of potential, and if they'd put in the work in this film, I think he could have made a fantastic antagonist. To explain exactly why, I want to talk about Doctor Strange's flaws, starting from the first movie. When we meet Steven, he's an arrogant, selfish man. He thinks he's smarter than everyone else, and is only concerned with his reputation. Throughout the film, he learns to be better. To me, the lesson of the first Doctor Strange is perfectly summarized by the Ancient One. It's not about you. The lesson there is about heroism, about serving something greater than yourself, doing the right thing for the right reason. And that's a good first movie lesson. However, they leave a very big flaw unaddressed, his hubris. Strange believes that his choices are the right ones, his plans are the best. He doesn't think through the consequences. He's a hero, no doubt, but a hero with flaws. Just look at the actions he takes throughout his appearances. In his first film, he uses the Time Stone to reverse time, despite being warned against it. In Infinity War, he gives the Time Stone to Thanos. And of course, in No Way Home, he casts the spell that opens the multiverse. Are these the wrong choices? In the case of the first two, not necessarily. Desperate time, desperate measures. He made extreme decisions because of extreme circumstances. No Way Home is where you really see the flaw on display, though. He uses a dangerous spell because he thinks he's powerful enough to control it. The situation is not desperate in any way. There are other ways to resolve the problem. Yes, Spider-Man was the one who asked him and messed it up, but still, Doctor Strange chose to cast the spell. It's hubris, plain and simple. And for the first two, the question becomes, does the end justify the means? He's tampering with the natural order of the universe, gambling with trillions of lives. Just the fact that he is able to do that, the fact he believes so deeply in his choices, is indicative of his hubris. He believes his plan is right, no matter what. Like I said, yes, he's a hero. I'm not saying what he did wasn't heroic. Strange has sacrificed and done a lot to become more selfless. But this flaw is still there, and it's the perfect thing to challenge him on. And Mordo is the perfect villain to challenge him on it. His motivations and goals create a perfect foil for Doctor Strange's biggest flaw that has gone unaddressed. Going off what we saw at the end of the last film, Mordo is against any kind of tampering with the natural order of things. He thinks the sorcerers hold too much power, and that the more they screw with things, the more the consequences will build. And he sees Steven as an embodiment of these issues, so naturally, he'll try and stop him. Now, we have a conflict that's based on the character's ideals and beliefs. Steven believes, consciously or unconsciously, that his decisions are the right ones. He doesn't see the issue with the power he wields, because he believes he is smarter and more capable than anyone else. To borrow a phrase from the film that we got, he always has to be the one holding the knife. Mordo believes that Steven is too powerful and making reckless choices, which means he's dangerous. He can see Steven's hubris, whereas Steven cannot. So, the plot could revolve around Mordo trying to kill Steven. In the course of their conflict, their conversations would help illuminate just how flawed Steven is. Mordo would be the mirror held up to Steven, showing him exactly what's wrong with him. I think it would be effective if he also used magic to highlight his points. Mordo could cast a type of divining spell that shows Steven all the pain that people experience because of the snap, because of his choices. Also, we could take the time to explore why exactly Mordo has such issues with power. They don't give us much of his backstory in the first film, so there's room to work with. Perhaps an abusive parent, or something to do with his parents facing extreme consequences for their morally dubious actions. I don't have all the details figured out, but establishing why he believes what he does would be critical. Of course, there would be more to the plot than just this. It would probably require rebuilding the plot from the ground up. Strange should be trying to solve some kind of problem, maybe stabilizing the universe after the incursions from No Way Home. The point is, Mordo would be a thematically stronger villain than Wanda was. He could challenge Steven in a unique way and force him to undergo character development. Once again, this is just my own personal take on Multiverse of Madness. I'm still very happy with what we got, and all the people who worked on the film did a great job. I can't wait to see where they go with Doctor Strange from here. But what do you think? Do you like Wanda in the villain role? 
Do you think Mordo would have been a better fit? Is there a comics villain that should have been in the movie instead? Let me know in the comments. Also, my friend Parker, who helps me with some of the ideas for these videos, recently started his own YouTube channel. He's got a review of Phase 4 that breaks down some of its problems. It should be on screen right now, and it will be down in the description. Go check it out, it's a really good video. And thank you very much for watching.